Good evening. Welcome to Behind the Spotlight. I am Crystal Lampett and I'm here to get to know some of your favorite musicians. Now, if you're from the Midwest, you have maybe seen our next guest performing at a roadhouse or a biker bar. I am very pleased to welcome AJ Gaither. AJ, you are going to kick us off with a performance. What are you singing first? I'm going to sing a tune called Train Hand Blues about the workers in the train yard down off I-635. Okay. Please welcome AJ Gaither. Thank you. All right, and that was AJ Gaither performing Train Hand Blues. That's correct. So you said it's about some of those workers well, on the railroad. Uh, I stayed for a while near the, uh, there's a big train yard there under the 635 mm -hmm. bridge. I think it's a Union Pacific yard. And uh, man, they're just down there working hard all the time. And I used to roll in about 4 a.m. trying to go to bed and I'd hear the train whistles and stuff. And so um, I wrote the oh. song. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's like embedded in your memory. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a hard working people. It's, it's a hard working they song. They are. Yeah. Well, you know, Kind of listening to the lyrics and hearing you say like i got a wife at home i got mm -hmm. mouths to feed sounds like a very blue collar it is person. you know i try to write uh working class music blue yeah. collar music like normal normal stuff you know and i feel like that's relatable relatable stuff we've all experienced that working hard trying to feed the family and everything so. absolutely and were you ever going to be a train hand blues man were you gonna be I, that? Uh, you know, I applied, for a, I applied for a job at that train yard. I did, uh, I did not pass the test, but uh, <laughs> I did apply. And, uh, you know, when I, was, when I was younger, I thought that's what I was going to be. I was going to work and do the wife and kids in the house. But um, 
I've lived basically the exact opposite life. I have uh, a whole lot of freedom and, and not a lot of anything else, you know. Not a lot of uh, strings attached. No, no strings attached. I like it that way. You like it? Mm -hmm. So was that all, I mean, what made you decide, like, okay, so this is sort of the cookie cutter, get married, have kids. Mm -hmm. What made you decide, actually, I want to have life on the road? Um, I don't know, man. I, I had a, you know, I was working, uh, I was working in Blue Springs restoring cars, and I had a little apartment, I had a new truck. Bought a new motorcycle, living there with my girlfriend, and uh, it still didn't really make me that happy. I still felt like I was struggling, and um, when the relationship ended, I kind of let go of everything else, and I just started asking myself uh, what did matter to me and what did yeah. I want to do with my life, and uh, it was music, man. I always wanted to play music, and uh, you know, you grow up and you go through different phases, and you, you listen to different genres of stuff, and once an adult, I kind of looked back to my childhood growing up uh, down south, and... Um, Man, country and blues was kind of where it was at for me, and um, I started teaching myself to play that sort of stuff and never looked back. And you're originally from Arkansas? Originally, yeah. I'm originally from uh, south central Arkansas, um, not the mountainous part, the swampy part. Oh, and uh, I grew up okay. there until I was about 18. Bayou. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I was in Locust Bayou. That's where I grew very up. Very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that I, I can I can hear that in your sound. Right. Like, it's very yeah. rooted in that yes. and bluesy and bluegrass. Oh, yeah, man. And that, so that's what gets you. Like, that's what you decided. Okay, yeah. you know what? This is what's really important. I think there's something to be said for simplicity, too. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm about. Uh, simplicity and, and authenticity, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I want things that are real and things that aren't uh, sugar-coated. Yeah. I like that. I think a mm. lot of people relate. Yeah. And um, speaking of simplicity, you live most of the time out of your mm -hmm. van. I do. Um, you know, after... Uh, I've been doing this about five or six years, and every year I toured more and more and more. And the more I toured, the more time I spent living out of my vehicle on the road. And uh, it just be kind of became kind of a lifestyle, you know. And uh, some people may be familiar with today, there's uh, these van lifers, and they live on the road like that. And uh, there's a whole network of free camping and state parks you can stay in and, and places uh, to get what you need on the road. And uh, I just kind of adopted that as a lifestyle, too. And so um, I stay mobile. You don't got no pesky rent or leases or utility bills that way. And uh, that's good for a musician because we don't make a whole lot. So anytime you can cut out some costs, that's good. You know? And all the cut the fat, you know, oh, yeah, minimize, all, I minimize. I spend it all on uh, gas and music gear and some whiskey now and then. That's about it. A little it. bit of whiskey. You do mm. sing about whiskey a lot. I do. It's, it's my drink of choice. I'm a fan. That's yeah. your favorite? Oh, yeah. By far. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I do. I, I, I love what I hear so far. It seems like ev everybody gets that, you know, like mm -hmm. life on the road. I just want to be free. I you mm -hmm. don't want to have a drink and enjoy my life. Exactly. And uh, we're going to be right back to get into that a little bit more. Sounds good. In a few minutes. Thanks Thank so you. much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's so fun. Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. Today chatting with AJ Gaither. Howdy. Hashtag van lifers. This is a thing. <laughs> it is a thing, you know. So, uh, I need to hear more about this because I was not familiar with van life. I did not know it was a trend, but you're doing it. Well, yeah, I was doing it uh, without even knowing. Uh, like I said, for me, it was just a, a means to be able to afford to tour on the road because I couldn't mm -hmm. afford hotels. Um, people give you spots to stay, but not always. And so uh, I converted my van into sort of a makeshift camper and have been doing it a few years before I discovered there's a whole subculture of people with uh, makeshift campers and small RVs and uh, just living out on the road, man, uh, unattached, uh, visiting state parks and there's uh, government land you can stay on for free and uh, just out there um, kind of living life, you know. And so I, I've adopted some of the, some of what they do too as well to get, to get, get by on the road, you know. Well, and another good point that you made is that if you live in the Midwest, especially if you're in a place where public transportation is not so easily mm -hmm. accessible, you just have a van, you just park it wherever. You don't have to worry about getting home. Oh, no, you don't have to man. worry about a DUI. No more DUIs, no more long drive home when you're sleepy <laughs> trying to get home. You just yeah. uh, you find somewhere safe to park it. And, and most of the bars, uh, most of the bars and venues I play on the road are um, they're real uh, friendly with that. They give me a spot yeah. to stay, you know. They'd rather I would just stay there than, than drive off, you know. I mean, the nature of the music I play, I'm, I'm going to drink. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, it's you know. a kind of part of the show. I think it's you kind of, of incorporate it. It's part of the show. It's very much, you know, uh, back to that authenticity thing. So. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I just have to ask before I forget, 
your beard yes. is amazing. Thank you, thank you. Tell Sh us the routine. Sheer laziness. <laughs> <laughs> Sheer laziness. Uh, if I got somewhere important to be, I might comb it. I combed it today. But uh, other than <laughs> you that, uh, it for us. just let it grow. I'm getting these wicked little gray stripes. I'm pretty proud of that. And uh, other than that, I just, I just let it do its thing. You know? Looks good. You pull yeah. it off well. Thank you. Appreciate so, it. So if you weren't, you know, in music, I mm -hmm. guess, what... Would you, where do you think you would have been? What would you be doing right now? Well, uh, for the longest time, I, I restored like muscle cars and I did custom cars, mostly uh, interior trim. And uh, my family did that for three generations. So wow. I imagine had I not gotten into music, I'd have done that. Uh, prior to that, I, oh man, I, I was in Memphis for a short time trying to go to art school. Um, you what know, type I feel of like art, art were you studying? You know, uh, Everyone told me to get into graphic design, and kind of when I yeah. learned that that meant sitting in a cubicle, I was out of there quicker than, you, you were know, like, no, no, I don't thanks. want to sit in a cubicle, you know. And so, uh, so I, I didn't really chase art professionally. I was, you know, in high school, I thought that's what I wanted to do. And then, um, you know, it's funny, in high school, I always thought I was a decent artist, but I, I, I thought at the time I couldn't play music. And so I thought, well, I just, you know, design posters or album art or something. And I thought that'd so be my connection. So you weren't even playing music yet? No, I, I've only been playing music for seven years total. Wow. Yeah, seven years. No, yeah, I, I didn't play as a, as a youth. I was very interested in music. It's been probably the biggest thing in my life, you know what I mean? Uh, it's definitely a, I'm a music lover, but uh, I never really figured I could play. I had a guitar what a while. Was, and, what you made know. you think, you know, when was that moment that you thought, I could totally do this, I love um, music, I want to do this. Was there a defining moment There for was, you? you know, I just kind of, I was, I was honestly kind of in a big, deep depression, to be honest. Um, I'd lost... Uh, I lost a lot of things in life, and I didn't have a lot going for me, and uh, I just, you know, uh, I decided if there's, you know, if there's one thing I'm going to do before I do something dumb, it's like, you know, I kind of wanted to learn more about music. You know, I never really done that, never really chased it, and uh, actually I was, I was living with a, a girlfriend, and she had left, and one of the things, she, she left pretty hastily, she had left a guitar, so there was a guitar in the house, oh. it was hers, not mine, I didn't play. And uh, so in my kind of lonely depression, I started picking up this guitar and I learned a few chords. And uh, I've been listening to a lot of a lot more roots and blues and rockabilly and country at that point in my life. And so, uh, man, I was kind of digging this acoustic guitar and I went out and bought a harmonica. Uh, all my friends abandoned me because harmonica, I don't know if you know this, you sound terrible if you learn how to play <laughs> like, it. And so, stop, oh, stop. they hated me, man. They hated me. Uh, <laughs> they'd rather play video games and I'd show up with my guitar and harmonica just practicing away and they hated it. But uh, I stayed after it and um, they started to catch, you know. I started to get gigs, and next thing you know, uh, you know, the day job's telling me, "Oh, you're here late every day because we know you're out playing these gigs, and you, yeah. need, you need to choose one." And oh, they okay. just they like, just called commit. me on the right day, and and I chose one. And you're I like left, it's music. Yeah, and, and I was pretty confident walking out the door, but it's a 30 minute commute back to where I was living at the time, and about 15 minutes in, <gasps> started to lose it. You, know, you had like, like a second thought. There's there's no steady paycheck now, and you got to figure out a way to make it happen. And uh, since then, you know. Uh, Today, there's so much more to being an independent or a DIY artist like I am yeah. because it's not just playing the music. Now, you got to promote your own shows, you got to book your own shows, and if you're going to tour, you got to be able to route and plan tours. Uh, you got to be able to do so much more than, you know, and uh, so that's kind of what I do. Yeah. yeah. And so that's kind of what I set out to do over the last few years. I've just been uh, working hard and, and finding ways to be able to do this uh, independently on my own as much as I can. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and again, having your own control, your own creative control, is yeah, you know, it's I think a big very deal. important. Yeah, it's a big deal. You know, it's interesting that so many artists, I think they become artists after suffering a deep depression, whether Absolutely. it's the end of a relationship. Absolutely. Do you think that there's something to that? Is it that creative people have to experience some kind of hardship, or is it just you know, the nature of music? Is that it, it forces um, you to explore your emotions? Right. I think so, man. I think... Uh, well, like you said, going through any hardship, you know, uh, depending on what kind of music you're setting out to play or setting out to uh, express, um, is going to show in your music, whether or not you're just singing sad songs because you think that's what the people in the bar want to hear or because you're writing sad songs because you were sad when you wrote those, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I also think there's a huge tie between people that are um, bipolar or deal with manic depression because there's the depression side of it, uh, but then there's the manic side, and the manic side is a high, and that lets you believe you can go out there on stage by yourself and entertain oh. 100 people. The manic side lets you believe that you can build guitars out of cigar boxes and drums. <laughs> and just the do manic it. side lets you believe you can get in a 20 year old van and drive coast to coast, but then you know you get home from the gig. So at was night that what it was? It was like a manic part of, part of you oh, that yeah, just oh, thought. Oh, definitely, and, and, and it still is. You know, really? like there's still a part that lets you believe that you can achieve this stuff, but but it's a it's a balance, it's a seesaw. Then there's days where. 
you don't even know if you can get on stage and play a song. You know, you don't even know, you know, if what'd you do? Like, did you walk away from your job and relationships and apartments and, and all this stuff to do go you, play music? Do you, you second know? guess and yourself a lot with that decision? Even, you do sometimes. Even now. Yeah, even now yeah. sometimes. You know, because there, there's good days and there's bad days. So that's for Which sure. Just like man. A, everybody, I yeah, think. Like, and that's the thing too, man. Like, uh, you know, I don't know how rock stars do it, but for us guys, what I call, call working class musicians, like. We do struggle like everyone, you yeah. know? Like, we've got good weeks and bad weeks. Uh, we've got expenses, things break, you know? And um, it is, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out there like any, any independent contractor that's got his van with his tools or his plumbing gear or whatever. I'm, I consider myself just like that. It's just that I'm playing music instead of fixing stuff, you know? Well, but you do fix a lot of stuff I because <laughs> you're very self-sufficient. You fix up your van. You work in your van a lot, obviously. Yeah. And your instruments, everything, mm -hmm. handmade. Everything's handmade, uh, and I try to do pretty simply so. Um, I use basic instruments, I mean, basic tools uh, to build these things. They're pretty rudimentary. Uh, the cigar boxes are regular boxes like you can get for free at a cigar shop. Um, I carve That's the necks so cool. myself out of wooden blanks. And uh, I, I'm a big fan of keeping them simple. There's a, the cigar box thing has become a trend right now, but there's a lot of guys that are putting, you know, you put two or $300 worth of electrics in the thing and you get a neck off a Les Paul and bolt to the thing and you kind of miss the point, Ooh, you know? If, yeah. if you can't, my opinion is if you can't build it on a workbench out in your barn, then you've missed the point. It doesn't you know, count. You know, it doesn't count. It doesn't yeah, count. That's just, that's that's just a fancy guitar. It's shaped like a cigar box, <laughs> that's all, you know, so. But, I mean, how did you learn, because you're not just playing one instrument mm -hmm. at a time, you're, you're doing what, harmonica, your mm -hmm. cigar box, yep. guitar, your uh, base, which is what, a feeder that's made out of like a yeah, a feed it's just a bucket? big rubber, uh, big rubber made plastic bucket. Yeah, so it was, cool. It held uh, dirty laundry until it was a drum. That's that's what its like, life consisted of. And yeah. now you will make music. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you don't need you know. clean clothes. We do music. Right. Um, but how did you learn to sort of coordinate? Because that takes, mm -hmm. a, you know, that takes some you serious know, uh, coordination. It's it's sort of a juggling act. And one of the ways that I sorted out in my head is that, uh, I guess, I spend a lot of time around cars. And cars have to have certain things happening at certain times to run. The fuel has to spray in the cylinder when the cylinder's coming up at the right time and the spark has to hit. So for me, I know at what time in my head, like, this foot needs to drop right as this hand drops, but this finger needs to move right as this one does. And so it's this weird timing thing that just happens in my head. And I started out just trying to strum a chord and use the kick drum. And yeah. it was almost impossible to me. I was so frustrated, like there's no way I'm gonna learn to just kick this kick drum. But I'd seen other guys do it, so I knew it had to be possible. I know it's possible. And, uh, <laughs> and sooner or later that, that became natural and I could do that. And then after a while that got boring. And so I built the snare drum and then I had a kick and a snare drum for a while. And that got boring and I added a hi-hat. And uh, now I've got four pieces of percussion and I'm able to do fills and breaks and stuff I don't even really process. But and That's it's just so from doing it, I mean, like anything you stay after, you just got to do it a lot. You know, I play, um, I play four to five gigs every week, and then mm -hmm. when I'm not playing, my guitar is usually an arm's reach away, and you know, got to stay after it. That is impressive. Thank you. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Thank you for joining us on Behind the Spotlight. Today, we have been talking to AJ Gaither. I've got one more song for you. This one is called Bad Decisions, something I think we've all done from time I'm to sure time. We've all made a few. Yeah. We've all made a few bad decisions in life, right? All right, this is your last song performed by AJ Gaither.
between you and me This love's on tragedy oh, It's a time in life when the right thing went all wrong And I hate to be this guy And I can't quite tell you why I make a bad decision I write it in a song like I made a few bad decisions All based on a good intent And no, I should know better Well, I got no regret Started out with too much drinking And ended up with too little thinking And but now I'm alone in stone and I wonder where you are Started out just good, clean fun Not meaning to hurt no one But one thing led to another like it always do Well, I'm trying to put together why Every time the storm weather rise Well, I can't sleep and all I think about is you And how we made a bad decision All based on a good intention And no, I should know better Well, I got no regret, Lord We made a few bad decisions all based on a good intention You know I should know better Well, I got no regret No, I should know better Well, I got no regret All right, and that was Bad Decisions by A.J. Gaither. Thank you so much for being on our show today. Oh, it's my pleasure. You are fantastic, and I want to know real quick where we can find some of your music. Uh, they can find me on iTunes and Bandcamp, and I believe Amazon. I can have stuff downloaded. Uh, I got videos on YouTube, but if they want to come see me in person, uh, I'm at the Westport Saloon every Sunday night from 9 till 1 in the morning. So come you're, on out. You're everywhere. I'm you're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, and hey, don't forget to catch us next week on Behind the Spotlight.